pay or two for one person. Yes, What is it, Sally? It's Mr. Potan. He gives me the Jimmy. For every time he just looks at me, I get goose pimply all over. I'm scared of him. I know just how you feel. Oh, I'm not worried about myself, but I don't like the way he looks at you. Don't you worry about me. And you're quite safe. Yes, ma'am. You know this man? Well, two days stranger to Willie Oliver Master. He was standing here when I awoke. I gave him a stop, too. You know, maybe we're making a mistake. There's no grease paint on his face. Look what I collected from the others. You have lots of power in your hands. Sorry, Willie and I made that mistake and hit you. If I had known you were a detective, it wouldn't have happened. When the pain is gone, the bro is forgotten. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Warren. Mr. Warren. Bring to first in mind of Willie. Very good idea for new mystery stories. I'm not interested in mystery stories now, Willie. I haven't heard from Joan Whiting. Worry. Oh, perhaps my mother more interested in writing you romantic novels. Somebody will be writing an epitaph for you if you don't get out of here. Wait a minute. Call Captain Walters. Use the library phone. Yes, sir. This is the girl. Now, let's cut out the story and get on the facts. Well, you couldn't be thinking well, that. I certainly am thinking. 
And I'm thinking hard. Did it ever occur to you that every one of these crimes was committed exactly as outlined in this book here? Somebody tried to kill me with a telephone stiletto. Oh. Where is it? Whoever planted it evidently removed it. Oh, I see. A perfect alibi, huh? Do you think I tried to kill myself? No. But you might try to alibi yourself. What reason would I have for committing these crimes? Well, I'll admit that the motive has me stumped, Andrews, for the moment. But I'll worry about the motive after I place the criminal. And I don't mind telling you right now that you're the most likely suspect. Because of my story. Exactly. They may have started out a story, but they've become very real lately. How did you know the telephone was out of order? Your receiver had been off the hook for some time. The supervisor checked and heard voices. After what happened in Chinatown... What happened in Chinatown? Some old Chinese was almost killed by a poison stiletto in the telephone. Would have been too if it hadn't been for some newspaper girl. Perhaps the telephone gentleman can use my humble assistance. What do you know about poison stilettos? Poison telephone stilettos live only in imaginary mind of Willie. Yeah, I suppose all this stuff is just imaginary too. Chapter 6. Well, sword sword. Well, the next victim had better not be at the hands of a sword sword, or I'll put you where you'll be too busy to write books. Yes, and you too. Listen, Captain Walter, we're wasting valuable time. Jones in Chinatown, I tell you, and I've got to find her. I don't know why I'm letting you lose, Andrews, but I'm going to take a chance. You'll have a lot of explaining to do if she isn't found. If she isn't found, it won't be necessary. Come on. Madam Miss Rocco? It's so handsome. What about him? Well, you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm your friend, Sonia. It's his eyes. The way he looks at anyone. His uncanny genius for making things that no one else can make or understand. I'm afraid of him. You don't have to be afraid. If he ever does anything to you, tell me. Thank you, Grogan. That's nice of you. Of course, there may be nothing to my fears. Sonia, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. Thank you. But I think you'd better go. All right. But don't forget, you can always count on me. Come in, Victor. I want to talk to you. We've started something that's going to be difficult to finish. I want to quit, Victor, before we become too deeply involved. You have come to the decision a little too late, Sonia. But I can't stay... We are too deeply involved to quit. No, my dear. Let us not speak about quitting now. Watch your step. And remember what I told you about the next victim. I'm going to check up with my men. I 
think it best that we resume our operations elsewhere. After all, there are other Chinatowns. Los Angeles, for instance. But I haven't completed my work here. Your work isn't necessary to our purpose. White trade in Chinatown has been totally suspended. Our stores have increased their sales. I'm afraid you're letting your personal feelings interfere. What do you mean by that? Martin Andrews. That isn't true, Victor. Your mind is so set on revenge that it's become an obsession with you. And why shouldn't it be? You and I have every cause to want revenge. Why shouldn't you feel as I do? Haven't you suffered as I have? Perhaps. But my primary motive was a business one. I wanted to increase our sales. I've done this in San Francisco, and now it is necessary to move on. It is only your personal feelings that keep you from leaving. You understood my personal feelings when you enlisted my aid. I'm sure that they will remain the same in other locations. Leaving San Francisco will give you the opportunity of continuing with your experiment and be of great benefit to my employer. Hmm. You have given me something to think about. Yes. We shall discuss it first. Oh. Wow. 